Hello, my name is Cliff Goldstein. I'm with Eclipse Engineering. Uh, we're a manufacturer of, uh, of seals and uh, different types of uh, polymer profiles. Uh, today we're going to have a discussion on uh, rubber energized seals, uh, but we're going to start with some basics. Uh, um, a little background, Eclipse Engineering, uh, we design and manufacture uh, high performance uh, uh, polymers. Uh, we make a variety of different types of seals, um, uh, specifically uh, uh, rubber energized seals, spring energized seals, and, and rotary seals. Um, and today our focus, as we've stated, is uh, going to be around uh, uh, how uh, rubber energized seals work. A um, couple different types of uh, elastomers. Uh, we, we know what an O-ring looks like, but there's an X-ring, or uh, another name for it is quad ring. Uh, they typically are um, uh, doing a little better job at uh, sealing in dynamic situations. They're good bidirectional seals, uh, easy to install, just like an O-ring. They're relatively low cost, um, and they, they do come in a variety of materials, but not nearly the variety uh, that, uh, that the elastomers do. Uh, chemical compatibility is limited to the, uh, uh, the type of uh, rubber that we're using. Um, we like to think of them as slow, dynamic, uh, and generating high friction. And, and typically, uh, we reduce the, uh, the compression on elastomers uh, in dynamic loading um, so that we don't drive the friction up. But of course, when we do that, we also increase the level of leakage that's tolerant underneath that elastomer element. Um, temperature ranges, uh, depending, on the, depending on the compounds, uh, uh, can be as much as uh, that the slide says 350 in, in the uh, uh, fluorocarbons or uh, viton type elastomers, they'll go to uh, uh, as high as four with extrusions to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, at low temperature, there's some uh, uh, custom compounded nitriles that will get you down into the minus 65 range. But in quadring style, uh, that's a very expensive process uh, because those are special run seals. Um, and um, uh, uh, you have limited shelf life uh, with all elastomer products. Uh, uh, the U-cup seal is a, is a moderately cost uh, element. It is uh, pressure actuated. There's a lot of common sizes uh, that are on the shelf. Uh, it's uh, well suited to uh, uh, reciprocating applications. And they're easy to install. Uh, usually they're um, made out of urethane materials, but they can be made out of uh, elastomer materials uh, like uh, the different nitriles or uh, or uh, whatever nitro, whatever, whatever other type of uh, rubber compounds you'd like to have them manufactured out of. Again, chemical resistance uh, is an issue. Um, uh, they're not suited for high PV or, uh, or, or in rotary applications. They do have limited temperature ranges, uh, uh, and of course, uh, the U cups are uh, unidirectional. And uh, the next style of U cup seal out of the uh, uh, rubber elements is an O-ring energized uh, uh, U-cup, and um, in this particular case, uh, what it does is it just simply increases the loading of the lip, and and typically uh, this is done uh, at, at low pressure to get low pressure sealability. However, um, uh, 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 they are found in high pressure applications, generally at high pressure. The uh, fluid will do the sealing, uh, but at low pressure, that O-ring creates an awful lot of drag, but also does a, uh, improves the sealability at, at low pressure. Um, so we're going we're gonna to move on now to uh, rubber energized uh, PTFE or Teflon or, or whatever type of material we want to machine it out of, but basically rubber energized uh, uh, polymer elements. And um, what I'm showing here is uh, a very basic design. Uh, this is what we call a channel seal. Uh, it, uh, uh, it's, it's one of the most basic Teflon element style seals that's available in the marketplace today. Um, these types of elements will retrofit into standard O-ring grooves. And so if you've got a, an O-ring in a groove and you want to reduce the friction, or uh, you want to extend the life of that product, uh, the uh, channel seals will retrofit into 
either zero, one, or two backup ring grooves. Um, it uh, uh, obviously brings the friction way down because that PTFE element or whatever material we make it out of can have a coefficient of friction uh, from uh, uh, anywhere as low as 0 0.04 uh, up to uh, about 0.12 if it's a PTFE element. And uh, if we're getting up into some of the urethanes, we can get uh, uh, closer to 0.5 or so on the uh, on friction. Um, where that rubber element will have a coefficient of friction of about one, so it's dramatically less than that rubber element. Um, so it reduces friction. It extends the life of the O-ring. Uh, there's an ease of installation. They're fairly easy to install. Uh, generally on rod seals, we uh, kidney shape them. On piston seals, they can be stretched out and then resized back into shape. So um, they are uh, uh, fairly easy to install. They do have a finite life, though. Uh, so if it's got a, if there's a lot of motion uh, or high high motion, uh, we can wear that cap out. Uh, they are a little bit fragile on installation because they are very thin. Um, try and limit the fillers um, or the amount of filler in those seals uh, because of the thinness of them. Um, however, uh, and they do have a little bit lower extrusion resistance compared to some of the other types of of, of elements. Um, a PTFE cap seal, uh, we're going to talk about that next. Um, these do not fit into standard O-ring grooves. Um, however, it, it provides a much greater uh, uh, performance over uh, the, uh, the typical channel seal. Uh, that O-ring becomes far more important here because we need that O-ring to support the Teflon element. Um, we build in interference in these cap seals. Um, and what the O-ring does is it, uh, it, it helps to maintain that interference, uh, especially on startup. Um, these types of cap seals uh, have increased extrusion resistance over other elements uh, because uh, it puts more PTFE or more, more element, more material into the extrusion gap. Uh, lower friction over the O-ring, of course. Uh, we have that same friction level of 0.04 to 0.12 and a much greater dynamic range. So this will handle uh, uh, quite high uh, speeds or PVs uh, compared to uh, other types of uh, sealing elements. Uh, they can be used both in rotary and reciprocating service. Uh, it's available in the multitude of compounds. And uh, we'll talk about materials later on in the presentation, but uh, uh, some materials are better suited for uh, different types of mating shaft materials. And so we try and mate uh, materials based on uh, uh, what we're sealing against, and also uh, uh, the kinds of fluids we're running in. Um, they are machined, so we can customize them based on the uh, customer's gland. Uh, this particular seal is a, a bi-directional seal. It will take pressure in both directions. Um, some of the disadvantages, uh, we do have limited uh, service life from the O-ring, uh, but uh, it's operating as a static seal, so it's not nearly as important as uh, just an O-ring operating without any type of cap at all. A um, little more, a uh, uh, little better surface finish is required. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, uh, Teflon will ride over bumps uh, that are in the, um, uh, that are on the, uh, on the sealing surface that we're trying to seal, uh, where uh, an O-ring has a tendency to follow the shaft or the uh, bore material a little bit better. They require additional hardware design, uh, like split glands uh, or retaining plates. Uh, but in general, uh, these cap seals are easy to install. Uh, they can be kidney beamed uh, to go into rod glands, uh, or they can be easily stretched and reformed uh, using resizing tools uh, to, uh, to get them to go back in for uh, piston-style seals. The, this is a... a, a picture uh, a cross section of a seal and I, and I put this up here so that um, as a customer or as your customer looks at these seals they get an understanding that what we do is we always try and depict things in a cross section and uh, I'm showing a standard gland dimensions or how our seals are de are depicted uh, you can see that we should in this in this case this is a piston style seal so there's a bore diameter a rod diameter you'll notice that the surface finish on the dynamic surface is is better 
than the surface finish in the gland. Um, and also would call out radiuses in the bottom of the groove. And we need radiuses uh, specifically because the, there's uh, uh, the customer, when he's machining these glands, uh, typically can't make sharp corners. Uh, uh, so we, we do build in radiuses uh, uh, for the ease of machining. We also show the groove width. Now you'll notice that the groove width typically will be at least uh, uh, five to ten thousandths wider than the actual PTFE element and certainly much wider than the elastomer. The elastomer gets deformed. You'll notice that it turns into an oval shape when it gets into the groove. That's, uh, that's the initial squeeze that is, uh, uh, that is on the ring. Um, in this particular picture, we're also showing some uh, uh, installation um, or some uh, inspection dimensions so that when a customer receives this part, um, and we're showing the diameter of the ring in the uninstalled state, uh, as well as the uh, as well as the width of the seal, and also calling out the elastomer, and uh, sometimes we'll call out the the dash size of the elastomer. We're also calling out the material. Uh, uh, in this case, it's a polyimid filled PTFE or this ET014. The buffer ring uh, will handle very high pressures. It's relatively easy to install. Um, it provides nearly zero leakage and uh, will allow fluid to return back into the system when, uh, when the rod is returned back into the system. It is not a zero leak seal, so it needs a secondary seal behind it. Uh, typically, uh, buffer rings will either have uh, uh, dual buffer rings out of, and they could be out of PTFE elements, um, but uh, uh, generally we'll find the second element not to be PTFE, but to be some other type of elastomeric material like a urethane or some other elastomer material. Um, and what that does is it will provide a zero leak seal on the backside and the, uh, the in between the, the buffer ring and that secondary seal, there'll be a little bit of fluid which will keep the uh, secondary seal lubricated. The trick to making this seal work is that the pressure in between the buffer ring and that secondary seal will be somewhere less than 100 PSI. Um, so uh, that causes that secondary seal to perform uh, for a, a very, very long time. Uh, buffer rings like this will operate at 3,000 and with backup ring systems will operate uh, at much higher pressures to, into 5 and 10,000 PSI. Uh, very high PV rates or very high cycle rates. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty reliable system. They're found a lot in construction equipments. But these are rod seals. Uh, I've seen them on pistons. But typically people use them uh, to create a zero leak rod seal system. Um, it, it is unidirectional, um, so it, uh, it has to be installed properly. And typically it's found with some type of oil or some type of hydraulic fluid uh, or some kind of uh, combination of uh, water-based fluid. This is a cross-section of what it looks like, and you'll notice that it has a uh, unique design. That angle on the back side, uh, the purpose of that is that when the rod is being returned into the system, uh, in this particular picture, the seal would, would actually rotate counterclockwise slightly in the groove, allowing fluid to come back underneath the lip and into the system. Um, it is energized with an O-ring, and in some cases we can, op uh, we can energize them with uh, square rings, which increases the load and uh, does even a better job of, of sealing it um, at, uh, uh, at, very, uh, at various pressures. Um, we're going to move on now uh, to uh, uh, rotary seals. Um, and rotary seals are, are kind of a different animal because uh, – uh, one of the things that we have to be concerned with is heat. Uh, heat is probably the biggest reason why rotary seals fail. Also, uh, with rubber energized rotary style seals, one of the primary goals is to ensure that the uh, O-ring does not rotate in the groove. And we have some special ways of, of, of taking care of that. Um, so we're going to talk about this a little bit. You'll find rotary seals like this um, in, in things like rotary unions, and uh, a rotary union would be described as a, a device that would fit, say, in the center section of a, 
of a, of a backhoe or a shovel where it's rotating around uh, the center, the top section of the machine rotates around the bottom section, and fluid has to pass through a joint. Um, they're generally very slow turning. Uh, you'll notice uh, uh, generally 10 to 15 RPMs is about as fast as they ever go. Um, the typical seal in the past has always been just O-rings, but they have had high failure rates uh, uh, just uh, due to the pressure and uh, pressing on the elastomer and pushing into the extrusion gap. The uh, Teflon energized, or rubber energized Teflon seals uh, do much better in these rotary designs. One of the problems with the design is that as these are rotating, uh, oftentimes the elastomer wants to um, uh, rotate underneath the Teflon element. And if that happens, uh, oftentimes we'll break the elastomer. So um, we have a process where we uh, treat the PTFE uh, and put a, a chemical on the back side of it. And when the rubber and the Teflon element are put together in these rotary joints, um, it causes a uh, mechanical bond to occur uh, between the uh, rubber element and the, uh, the coating that's applied to the back side of the Teflon, and uh, which causes the in friction to be increased dramatically between those two elements, so that we can drive all of the uh, uh, rotary action uh, at the dynamic surface. Um, the uh, disadvantages of this are that uh, putting that coating it does require a little more time. We have to etch the Teflon and then, of course, apply the coating. Um, O-rings have a limited service life, and, and that's in all applications. Um, we do, of course, require a better surface finish for the PTFE or Teflon element. And um, in these rotary unions, we typically don't have split hardware, uh, but it is limited to speed. Uh, if we get going too fast, uh, even that, uh, even that uh, uh, element, uh, even the, um, uh, the, the uh, coating does not stop it from, uh, uh, from uh, rotating. That ends the presentation. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to uh, uh, contact your local distributor, or of course you can contact Eclipse Engineering. And thank you very much for listening.